is Bill from Sitra Podcast, and I am going to show you over the next half hour a quick and easy method to paint your fire team or squad or platoon or however you want to do it. So this is a mass painting, if you will. So let's start with um, base coating and airbrushing. So right now I base coated these in a GW uh, Rathbone, I believe it is. Um, and then I am base coating them with stylized, just the base beige that comes along. And so I'm doing, uh, what am I doing? Eight minis here, nine minis. So as you can see, I am going through and airbrushing the uh, primer or the base coat, I should say. The primer was the uh, GW. And I am now doing the uh, airbrush of the primer and I'm making sure I'm getting all the nooks and crannies and I actually thin down this primer even though it, you're supposed to be able to use it right out of the, uh, the bottle so I primed it down so there it is gray sear is what I pr uh, primed them with gray sear not the other one so I'm also using um, the dark uh, green uh, game air I'm using flames of war edition chocolate brown I'm going to use some Game Air Goblin Green. And then I'm using Scale Color 75 Flat Black. And then also some Game Air. Uh, this is the Elf uh, skin for flesh tone. And then some washes. I'm bringing in some flesh wash. as well as some military shader plus i'll be using other ones later in the video and i'm starting off with a gen con collector series brush size zero uh, from games and gears uh, that is the mini i painted live um, on a stream several months back and i'm going to try and recreate the same paint scheme uh, for whatever reason i can't find that video to copy the paints so i'm trying to recreate as best i can by also using the cover of the ultra combat modern rulebook as a reference guide so i'm starting off with the uh, goblin green that's the brighter of the two greens and i'm just putting on little splotches here and there so there's no rhyme or reason to it just put your paint down where you think it should go little splotches here and i'm doing it very light as you can see and I'm trying to get to the nooks and crannies and everything else. So as you can see, as I speed up the camera, I'm just splotching it on. It's a very random pattern. You want it to be random. That's the important part about camouflage painting is that you want it to be random. So we're going to keep going through it here. And I'm going to get all of these guys. So again, you're just taking that green and you're going to lightly uh, splotch it on here and there. Little dabs, little dupes. Just make sure you don't make the uh, dabs too big. And it should be all right. And let's see what we've got going on here. Um, so again, I'm just now putting in the uh, browns now, if I'm not mistaken. And with the brown, I'm, the important thing with the browns is to kind of layer it on top so that, um, you know, you get it all in there. Uh, you want it to feel like layers. So as you can see here, I'm layering in some of the dark green over along the edges of the brown splotches. So that will uh, kind of mold into it. So you don't want them to be separated. You want them to kind of fit in almost like a puzzle piece on edges. So you want to kind of uh, blend them in in certain spots. So right now it, it kind of looks like a mess. But I promise you guys that this will look much, much better as we get on with the... Uh, tutorial here or the how to it's not really a tutorial i would say just kind of a way of the you can get your guys painted up to a tabletop standard and get them on the table and they look good and you know you've got paint on them and go from there so i'm just using a piece of cardboard box edging and i hot glued them to the board to prime them and paint them um, i find it's much easier when i'm doing malt bulk painting like this um, you know, like I said, this is not going to win you any painting competitions, but it is going to look really good. And so just keep working at it. Find your splotches and then go from there. So as you can see, you know, we're speeding up the camera. 
Now I'm going to go into my uh, synthetic brushes. I use Games and Gears brushes. I really enjoy those brushes. They're very nice. And I'm going to use my number three brush, the synthetic one, to do my first layer of shading. And that's going to be the military shader. It's a green uh, wash. And that'll kind of tone down uh, the brightness of the beige undertones. So we're going to get a nice hefty thing. And I'm using an Army Painter Wet Palette. I love this thing. It's really great. It's probably the best palette I've had. Uh, I couldn't find my palette paper that came with it. So I'm using some um, Privateer Press palette paper. And it works okay. But I think actually I prefer the Privateer Press paper. I'm not sure what the difference is. But I do kind of like it much better. So again, I'm just speeding up the camera here for sake of time. And you're just going to give your uniforms and helmets a good wash. And you're just going to do that for all of it. Just give them a good wash. If you see any pulling, that's when you want to try and pull off some of it. But as you can see, it looks really dark, but it will definitely dry up much nicer when we're done. And we're just going to continue on like this as we go through all these. And again, just make sure you're covering the uniforms. So you want to tone down those colors. Now we're going to go over with again with a light tone because we want to bring out some of the uh, tans and browns and start working on some of those shades and shadows. So this will help uh, take the, a lot of the green away because it is more of a, if you look at the cover, there's a lot of uh, brown, brown tones, if you will. So after the uh, army wash is dried, uh, you wanna go into the light tone and put that all over your minis as well. Make sure you get a good healthy coat. Remember, if you have any pooling, you don't want it to pool. So you want to make sure that you are, um, you know, picking up any heavy spots with the dry brush or take your brush and just make sure you wipe it on a paper towel and go back and pick up any heavy spots. So we're just going to go through that and clean up that and finish that up as we go through this. And so then we are finishing the uh, wash and we're just making sure we cover everything evenly and get any pooling up and then we can go from there so the next step we're going to do is once we've get all the priming done or excuse me the washing done is we're going to move on to the next step Okay, so now you see how the wash has turned out and you can see how everything's toned down and it's coming together, it's blending together and it's looking really, really good at this point. All the equipment, it's melting, it's, it, you remember how everything looks splotchy? Now look at it, it looks like it's all blended together. And now I'm going to go with Cobra Drab from the Team Yankee paint lineup and I'm going to paint straps and equipment. And then I'm going to use some uh, contrast yellow for skin tone. And I'm going to also use some other brown. And I'm using the double zero size brush this now to do this. So here I'm using the uh, Cobra Drab to paint the knee pads and the straps and any other equipment, uh, the holsters um, to do those as well. So. It's hard to see on the camera because somehow I missed the mark. That's what the white X is for. But I'm painting all the straps. And as you can see, I'm now painting the holster green just to make it stand out a little bit because those are like a plastic holster. Um, and then the Beretta or whatever sidearm they have in there, depending on what you know you want to say it is, um, we'll paint that up different. Now I'm painting up his chin strap, his helmet strap um, on this one. And they had different configurations. So I had to paint up the head straps, the chin straps. Um, some have uh, the goggles on. Some of them had them on their helmet with the protective cover over them. So those I painted with the uh, Cobra Green as well, just to make it you know, stand out a little bit different. The uh, weapons literally just got the wash on them. And then as you can see here, I am uh, painting up one of the saw gunners. Uh, his equipment and you can see the goggles on his forehead there and you know if you look at it, it looks like he's got the uh, dust cover I don't know if it's on the goggles or pulled apart because it's normally not like that it's like one piece um, but so I just painted the whole thing if it was on the helmet I painted it as if it was covered and you can see I'm just putting a light coat 
of the uh, Cobra Drab on where all the straps are. And again, I'm miss, missing my mark here. And uh, you can see there, I'm painting up the uh, cover, the dust cover, protective cover for the goggles, and then I'm gonna paint the strap. And again, I'm not going super heavy on this. You know, if I wanted to paint this to competition standard or to a high standard, obviously I would be doing multiple layers and things like that to make things stand out. But again, we are doing these to get these on the table and to show you a quick and easy method so you can paint this up and look at how easily you can get these guys looking pretty good on your table for our tabletop standard. So I'm just gonna continue on and I'm painting up all the equipment. And then I'm gonna paint um, their hands, like their gloves. Uh, they're all wearing like tactical gloves, if you will. And I'm gonna paint the tactical gloves in the same green. I'm just checking my work here. And there we go. I'm gonna paint their hands like they have tactical gloves on. And then you're gonna notice a little bit later, I'm going to paint up a little um, black stripe or mark across the top of their knuckles uh, to you know simulate those tactical gloves they had the hard plastic covering over knuckles the knuckle guards if you will so that's what I'm working on here and I'm just gonna go through and check and make sure again I'm just checking the uh, goggles the sand cover the dust cover uh, that protective cover that goes over them and that's all you gotta do is you just pick out some minor details, you know, it's just to make it so it's not all camouflage and at points, you know, blends all together. Now it's it's very subtle. Uh, and I'm always uh, prescribed to the school of trying to simulate realistic camouflage versus something that's high contrast that will stand on a table. Look, high contrast looks really good, obviously, when you're painting up some miniatures, you know, you want things to stand out. But um, I like my miniatures to be close to uh, real as possible in the camouflage. Now there's a lot of great tutorials out there for multicam and stuff like that. Um, this is just me eyeballing the cover and uh, putting some paint down on the miniatures. And you know, I, I'm painting up two fire teams in, in this video. So I go through this whole process and this whole process, if I were to time it out, I think it took me five hours total, um, roughly. Uh, to paint up these nine minis to get them ready to put on the table. So again, I'm just painting over the the uh, chin straps, just picking out those details. That white mark is supposed to be my camera point. Um, and out here I'm painting his gloves. No, he's not giving us the finger. He's obviously leader type, so he's pointing the way or giving directions or whatever you want to consider him doing. So again, I'm just putting the paint down. Uh, Put in coat and remember thin coats, right? Thin coats. And these paints lay down pretty nice. You know the combination of these different paints. Uh, you know I'm using uh, Vallejo paints. I'm using Armory Painter paints. I'm using Scale 75 paints. Uh, I use some Team Yankee paints. I'm not sure what brand Team Yankee was. You know because obviously they didn't make their own paints. They just labeled it in their own little bullet bottles, which I thought were cool when they came out. Uh, they're okay paints, but you know it is what it is. So we are just uh, finishing up the model here and uh, just going through stripes and stripes, not stripes, straps and uh, knee pads and holsters. You know, anything that I would normally see like that green banding uh, because the bands typically aren't camouflaged. You know, the nylon straps, um, they're usually a solid color. So that's what we're going, you know, I could have gone black, but I thought the green would just be better. So um, now I'm just gonna go through all these guys and finish up painting them up, Oop, dropping them off and painting up the straps here and going from there. As you can see, this one has that kind of a dynamic running pose. Uh, obviously we'll remove that stanchion uh, when we remove them from the base to base them. So I even decided if we're going to put these on clear acrylic bases like the other one or if we're going to go different. So now I'm painting up the boots. Uh, this is Tan Earth. You know, just like the modern uh, U.S. military uh, suede desert boots that they have now, warm weather boots. Um, it's a huge culture shock from when I first went into the military back in the mid 80s when you still had black leather boots that you had to polish. You know, and then my uh, my paratrooper boots, 
uh, you know, which had to be polished to a high spit shine, you know, to go to these uh, was a, definitely a change. So here I am, I'm just rushing through, well, speed up camera to show you that I'm painting all these guys with their tan boots. And I saw a little bit of flashing that I didn't notice before, so I'm removing that as I paint. And like I said, we haven't decided if we're going to remove them from this base or base these the way they are um, or, you know, detach them and put them on the clear acrylic bases like I did with the initial uh, mini that I painted several months back. But again, I'm just going over and giving these all a coat. Now people are going, well, that's not a very smooth coat. No, it turns out pretty smooth. Um, but once I start putting the wash down, I want it to not look pristine. That's the whole thing. You know, these guys are in combat. Uh, things just aren't supposed to be pristine, you know? So they're not on parade. They're not, you know, uniforms. These guys have been out in the field and things aren't gonna look that grand. Okay, so I'm going to flesh wash. So I'm now gonna wash uh, the, their faces, wash their faces. I'm gonna put down, because I've already put down, you know, um, some of that elf flesh and I'm putting down a wash. And I'm trying to get his ears as well. And then his neck. And then I'm gonna do the next one. And this is the uh, Army Painter Flesh Wash. I really like it, it comes out really nice. Their washes are really good. Uh, they're very good. Um, so, you know, and here I'm trying to remove big puddles so he doesn't have these big dark eyes. You know, you want it to lay nice and just make sure you, you know, you're accounting for that. And then I have a pause in my video. Oh, there he is. Um, looking for some wash. And of course, I've missed editing this part of the video. Uh, okay, there we go. I found my mark again. And again, I'm just laying wash down and painting it up. And then I'm moving on to the next guy. Here, if I can find him. If I can find him, there he is. Oh, somehow I got red glob in my wash, so I have to clean him off and remove that and then come back. Just dab on the wash, that's all you gotta do. It flows real nice in there. And then I'm gonna take, dry my brush off on the paper towel there, and then I'm gonna remove a lot of the pooling that's going on. And then we are going to move on to the next one. Nice thing about this is not a lot of flesh tones, so. You know, it's just a matter of dabbing it down here. And you know, the nice thing about these flesh wash is that you don't have to go back and really highlight it if you don't want to. You know, it stands out pretty well. Uh, it just seems to flow nicely, darkens where you want it to darken and leaves the high, high points lighter. So, and again, I'm just dabbing. And just making sure you get all the flush areas. Then I am moving on to the next one. And this one has goggles, I believe. No, his goggles are up. So, no, no, he's got goggles. So you can see his goggles there. We're gonna take care of those right now. So I'm using a um, contrast paint, the ultramarine blue paint. Um, I just thought it looked good. You know, just a little bit of splash of color uh, to make it stand out. I could have, should have gone with a smoky gray or black but I just liked this one. It just make it stand out a little bit. All right, so I'm back to using my synthetic and now I'm gonna give everybody a, a dosing, a healthy dose of nun oil. I love nun oil. Uh, I think it really helps tie things together and really helps uh, bring out the edges and you know all the imprints and all that good stuff. So I give all the minis a good healthy dosing of nun oil. Again, we're painting to a tabletop standard, so you can get your guys quickly painted and out on the table to play the game because that's really what it's about. Now, uh, I personally love the painting side and the hobby side, uh, but you do want to eventually play the game. And I know everybody's been screaming for us to uh, get the demo game of Ultra Combat Modern. So to fulfill that request, I've got to get the guys painted up so it looks good on camera. So that's what I'm doing here, uh, giving everybody their dosing of nun oil to help uh, bring everything out and I'm gonna make sure I'm not pooling anywhere so I will dab my brush on it on a paper towel and pick up excess non oil 
and then again I'm going here and I did uh, attempt I think this is one of them uh, a paint uh, two miniatures to be like African-American soldiers and one to be more of a darker skin tone like a Hispanic or you know yes Hispanic uh, you know just so we're representing everybody just trying to be inclusive um, and it, it seemed to work pretty well um, again just tabletop standard so I, I again I really like the nun oil it really helps bring everything out and it really helps take some of the uh, it really helps pick up some of the highlights. This is the uh, Hispanic guy here. His skin tone is uh, much, you know, um, tanner, if you will, uh, higher pigmentation. And um, so he just got a couple extra coats of the flesh wash to help bring that out. And then this is one of the other African-American soldiers. Um, we used a uh, brown um, contrast paint for the skin tone, and it worked out pretty nice. So I'm just washing the uniform and everybody to get all the details to stand out. And it looks really good. I really like it. So we'll continue on here as we finish up our um, Nun Oil washes. And as you can see how the details pop. They just pop with under nun oil. It gets into all those nooks and crannies. You know, I could have used the uh, Army Painter uh, dark tones, you know, but they're more brown, and I really wanted the black to contrast here. I didn't want to put more heavier browns in. I really wanted it to contrast, so that's why I went with the black here. So, yeah, it's coming out nicely. Again, um, I'm going to dry my brush off and pick up. Um, some of the paint. So now I'm using the uh, Signature Series Detail Dry Brush from Games and Gear and I have a very light uh, green. I think this is the Commando Green from Army Painter and I'm just doing a very light light uh, dry brush just to make the edges pop. And as you can see everything's standing out really nice now. And those goggles look really cool I have to say. And that's the painting tutorial. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video, and I hope you were able to take something away from it. Uh, from the crew here at Sit Rep Podcast, we appreciate you watching and, you know, enjoying these videos. And we want to see you guys comment and really get into, you know, gaming. And that's what this video is all about. How do I get you, get your miniatures on the table in a quick and easy method and have them turn out to look pretty good? You know, this is a tabletop standard. It's not competition. It's not going to win you any prizes, but it will make your miniatures look good and presentable and really get you into the into the game. I think the results speak for themselves. You know, um, here's a picture of all the miniatures that we painted up in this video. Uh, Sans the one leader, which is in the upper right corner there, the one that's standing pointing. Uh, but if you look, they all look pretty similar. Um, you know. For me to have to go and recreate the formulas, if you will, of what I used to paint him originally. He's a little bit lighter than the other ones, but um, that's fine. I think they all look good. Uh, it was quick. It was easy. We used, you know, a lot of different paints. I included them in this video so you know exactly what we used. And again, I think the results speak for themselves. And um, here is a close-up of one of those miniatures. As you can see, the camouflage looks good. It looks natural. The equipment camouflage is nice. Stuff isn't, you know, just all of drag over camo like it was back when I was in the communities. Um, you know, as we transition to ACUs and then multi camera thing got camouflaged. Um, some things, you know, some straps and stuff obviously are still going to be webbing, like either a black or a green, like we did there. And some of the web and some of the weapons, you know, are going to be um, glued, what the process is called, um, more than others, you know, depending on the layer and stuff. So that's why we did the different shades. Um, and I also tried to replicate different ethnicities of soldiers because you know, we are all mixed uh, group and uh, you know, we wanted to represent everybody there. So again guys, we think it turned out to be a really good one and we hope you enjoyed it. So please make sure you like, subscribe, hit that bell if you're on YouTube, you know, uh, to get notified when we have new videos coming out. We do a video every Wednesday and we have a podcast every other Sunday. And then we have a gaming video that goes out on Sundays, whether that's a live game or a recorded game. So I can tell you that the 
crew in the Chicago studio is getting ready to film uh, the play of uh, the first scenario of Ultra Combat Modern, work that these minis will be used with, along with the Russian ones. Um, I'm not sure if I'll do a video on the Russian ones, uh, how to paint those up. I might. It's not that hard, but you know, you guys get the idea. Um, if you want to see the Russians painted up, please let me know, and I will do a Russian video. Um, I'm trying to edit these down so they last roughly 30 minutes, because that seems to be the magic number. Uh, if you guys have any other questions, comments, can, you know, just reach out to us on all our platforms, uh, whether it's Discord, Twitch, Twi uh, I think we're on Twitter. Are we on Twitter? I think we're on Twitter. Um, Facebook, obviously, is our main site, and um, YouTube, of course. So until we see you guys again, have a great time gaming, and get your minis on the table. And if you're looking for other formats of gaming outside of miniature war gaming, we do those as well. So again, get your minis on the table. Uh, we're going to be doing a one-day table build here soon. I got the uh, idea from Luke uh, from Luke APS um, Geek Gaming. Uh, he did one uh, a while back, and it inspired me to want to film our own version of a one-day table build. Um, we are going to have to pick the genre or time frame to do it in and the scale. So if you guys want to have input, make sure you put on this video what table you'd like to see us build. Now remember, it has to be in some reason. We can't build Stalingrad in a day uh, or even Rome, right? So, uh, you know, throw some ideas at us, and we'll see you in the next video. Take care.